So in my Maya scene now, um, I've created a plane. Uh, it doesn't really matter if you use a NURBS plane or a polygon plane. In this case, the polygon plane um, uh, already has the UVs laid out, which is, uh, you know, which is natural for a, a default polygon. So I've got both. I have a poly layer here and I have a NURBS layer here. Um, so it doesn't really matter. I'm going to just go ahead and use the NURBS. Uh, but the most important thing is that we have our UVs laid out here so that we can apply our texture maps um, accordingly. Uh, the other thing that I've done, if you recall from our, um, uh, our dimensions here, uh, the aspect ratio of this flag is uh, 1.9 to 1. So I want to make sure that my, uh, my flag is um, at least that, that aspect ratio. So I've scaled it to 19 in the X and 10 in the Z. So that gives me the same aspect ratio as the, uh, as the measured flag. So I want to do a couple of things here um, before I even get started. Uh, I want to start making this a little bit easy for myself. So um, in my window here, when I look for my hypershade, what I need to do is hold down the control and shift keys together and go to Window, uh, Rendering Editors, Hypershade, and that's going to put my hypershade up on my shelf. You can see that right now my shelf is empty. That's my custom shelf here, uh, which I've um, which I've emptied out specifically for this uh, for this operation. So the other thing that I'm going to do is go to my panels here and select a uh, a saved layout. The one that I want is the um, the hypershade render perspective. We saw this in the other video. When I click on this, this is going to give me my hypershade window up at the top. It'll give me my perspective window so that I can work on it down here in the lower right. And it'll show me my test renders in the lower left. So just like navigating through the modeling windows, if I just tap on any of these windows here, it'll maximize it for me. So I tap on the render view and it maximizes the render view and so forth. I'm going to take this one step further. In any one of these panel menus, I'm going to um, scroll down and find my uh, panel editor. In here, I'm going to look at my layouts. I'll find the perspective, the hypershade render perspective layout, and I'm going to click on this little button that says Add to Shelf. And that's going to put a little icon up here on my shelf so that no matter what view I'm in, even if I'm in a for view, uh, modeling view, I can easily just go up to the shelf, click that icon, and I'll be immediately returned to the saved layout. So that's a little bit of a time saver. Uh, in looking at my um, uh, another flag image here, uh, what I see here is a couple of things. First of all, even though this is cloth, I, I see some specular highlight on here. And the specular highlight is really important to be able to define uh, define the surface, define the way the light plays on this surface. So for that reason, I want to pick a shader that has a specular quality. Uh, what I'm going to do is select a blend material, and the reason that I want to do that is that my blend material has two specular shading controls. The, um, the, the eccentricity um, controls the rate of absorption from the specular highlight over to the, uh, to the terminator line. The specular roll-off is similar, is similar to the um, uh, the specular roll-off is similar to the cosine power of a, of a Fong shader. It controls you know, the relative shininess or brightness of this material. So because I don't really want a whole lot of specular highlight, um, I'll take my specular roll off and turn that down and I'll take my eccentricity and I'll turn it up which is going to spread that specular across the surface of this flag. I don't really want a very bright highlight so I'm going to start off with, um, with something that looks like this. I will adjust it later. So um, there's a, you know, there's a couple ways that I can assign this. I'm going to just um, select my flag, right click on my blend material, assign the material to the selection, and then I'll just do a quick render. Now I have a couple of lights already established in this, uh, in this scene. Uh, so let's just dolly out and we'll take a look at them. I have one light coming in uh, from the lower left here, and I have that light set to a blue. And um, the, the cone angle here is, um, 
uh, is relatively small. It's 35, and the penumbra angle is 30. And what that's going to do is, is give me a nice soft edge to this light. If I look through the light here, uh, you can see this is what the cone of the light is going to be. You can see exactly you know, where it's where it's hitting on this flag. And then the, um, the blurred or soft edge is going to be within this area here. Looking at the other light, very similar. Um, I have that set to yellow, um, and I have a small cone angle with a large penumbra. And um, again, this is going to give me um, this kind of a, uh, of a diffuse. So when we look at the um, when we look at the flag that we have, that, you know, our reference flag here, you can see that my shadows here um, are a little bit on the blue side, and my highlights are a little bit on the yellow side. So I'm trying to accent that uh, that color temperature on on my flag. And when I get to uh, adding bump maps or any kind of deformation on my flag, those lights are going to pick up these highlights, and the specular is going to really accent that. So again, I use you know, you can use what you like, and I encourage you to uh, experiment with this. Um, I like to use a combination of yellow and blue and um, um, uh, a specular shader of some kind. You know, in this case, it's the, it's the blend. So that's what I've got right there. And you can start to see a little bit here. My yellow is a little bit more prominent uh, uh, on the left side, and my blue is a little bit more prominent on the right side. Again, this is a starting off point. I don't have shadows on the lights. I don't have anything like that. Uh, but this is, uh, this is a place where I'm going to you know, be able to, to get started. So the next thing that we want to do is bring in our star field and use that as an image map on this Blinn shader. So we've already looked at the different 2D patterns that we can use. Since we're using an outside texture, uh, we want to uh, create a file texture, which is a placeholder for an outside image. Again, you know, we have all these different connections here. Uh, looking down here, you can see that that's connected to the placement node here. And I can uh, connect this file texture to the blend really at any time. So I'll just bring this over here and map that to the color, and you can see that 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 connection is the color. And then if I double click on the file texture, open up the attribute editor, I have a little um, file icon here that should bring me right to my source images directory. And uh, once this uh, refreshes, uh, there's my star field right there, the IFF, and I'll open that and you can see that this now becomes uh, connected. Now here's an interesting um, um, anomaly here. Uh, if I render this um, you can see that I've got, uh, this doesn't appear blue back here. What we're really seeing is the specular highlight on a transparent surface. Notice as soon as I brought in the star field, um, I ended up getting a second connection here. Uh, the, second, the second connection is the alpha uh, being connected to the transparency. Maya will automatically detect if uh, an image has an embedded alpha, and it'll make the connection if it can. So all I need to do here is just select that and hit the backspace key, um, and that will delete that connection and give me the pure color. So right now, um, my, um, my star field is covering the entire surface, and I don't really want it to. I want it to cover roughly half in each direction. So I can select my placement node, and the very first... Uh, section here is my coverage. There are two numbers. One stands for the U direction. The other stands for the V direction. I'm pretty sure that my my um, first CV of this surface is down here in the lower left hand corner, and my U direction goes up, and my V direction goes to the right. But um, you know, we can we can see as soon as we start adjusting these coverages. So um, I'll go 0.5 here in the U and 0.5 here in the V, and we can see um, you know, exactly where this is. Now, when I, um, when I changed the coverage in U to 0.5, this moved over um, from right to left. So that indicates that this horizontal direction is the U. And then when I, um, uh, when I changed the coverage to 0.5 in V, it scrunched down along the vertical. So I know that this, v, this vertical line is the V direction. Um, so now what I need to do is push it up to the to the upper left hand corner and I need to make that really the right size because 
uh, if we look at our original flag image, uh, we know that this doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't really go all the way to halfway here. So the length of this union or blue um, area is 0.76, and that's based on 1. Uh, our, um, uh, our length here is 1.9. So really what we want to do is make this, um, we want to make this U coverage um, one, uh, 0.76 divided by 1.9, and that's going to give us, uh, uh, give us the correct coverage. Now I could use a calculator here, but this coverage um, spot right here actually acts like a calculator uh, or um, an Excel cell. So if I just highlight that and I put my formula in there, I can just say equals um, 0.76. Uh, divided by uh, 1.9, that's going to give me uh, the correct value of 0.4. Uh, and then the uh, V coverage uh, is almost 0.5. It's actually 0.5385. And that's based on my unit of, of 1 right here. So I should be okay with that. So I'll just type in 0.5385 right there. Point five three eight five, and that's going to give me give me that. Now to move, um, I'm already as far to the left as I need to be, uh, but to move it up here, uh, remember that this is uh, this is a distance of one. So what I really need to do here to translate this is um, put in whatever the um, the inverse or the not the reciprocal, but one minus this distance. So it would be um, one equals. 1 minus uh, 0.5385 and that'll push that up to where it belongs. Now again, you know, this is this is for the Boy Scouts. Uh, I think that if you're doing any kind of an animation, um, you know, for uh, the news or for your demo reel or whatever, you can probably get away with just eyeballing it and nobody's really going to be able to tell. As long as it's a little bit less than halfway, uh, in one direction or a little bit more than halfway in the other direction, you should be fine. Um, I'm going to look at my um, my star field image. And down here I have a, uh, a section called color balance. In the color balance there are three attributes that I want to be concerned with. The default color, the color gain, and the color offset. The default color is this gray, and what it represents is whatever is underneath this texture. So since I've moved this off to the side and I'm not covering um, the, uh, the entire image, um, there has to be something underneath that. It is not the color of the shader. The color of the shader has been completely overridden now um, by this texture. So I can put anything I want in here. Uh, I can change the color uh, the default color by moving the slider. I can change the default color by uh, putting in a color or I can put a texture on there. Now remember from the last uh, video you can um, import a texture and drag and drop it here but in this case what I want to do is just click on it's a little bit easier to click on this little checkerboard icon. That's going to bring up my uh, create render node window and I'm going to take a ramp and put that on as the um, as the default color. Now my hyper shade window is starting to get a little bit um, uh, messy here. So in order to uh, uh, to just um, straighten it out a little bit, there's a couple things I can do. I'm going to grab this blend material here, and I can click on this second icon here. It just says rearrange graph. And what that'll do is kind of organize everything so I can see it. Uh, here we have our material. Here we have the file texture. And now you can see that the uh, this ramp is now an input of the file texture. So we're starting to get a nice dependency graph here. The ramp <coughs> is a V ramp, which means that it goes from red to green to blue along the V direction. Uh, if I change that to a U ramp, it would go in the opposite direction. Uh, we're going to leave this as a V ramp. And um, down here I have an interpolation. 
Right now, the, the, the interpolation is set to linear, which means that I have a nice even transition from blue to green and from green to red. I don't want that. I want hard lines. So I'm going to change that to none. And now you can see that I have, uh, I have no interpolation along here. Uh, I only need two colors, so I'm going to get rid of that blue. And I'm going to switch the green. I'm going to make that one um, red. And I'm going to take the red one, and I'm going to make that one white. Okay, so now I have two stripes. There are 13 stripes in the, Amer in the American flag. So I'm going to go back to my placement here. And right here I have a repeat in U and a repeat in V. My vertical direction is the V, so I want to repeat this. If I repeat this twice, I'm going to get four stripes, two iterations of two stripes each. Uh, if I go to six, that will give me 12. And since I have 13, I want to repeat this 6.5. And that's going to give me uh, my 13 stripes. However, uh, looking at my American flag, uh, we have a red stripe at the top and a red stripe at the bottom. And in my, um, in my texture here, um, it's the opposite. Now, I could go back to the ramp and reverse these two colors and make the white on top and the red on the bottom, and that would take care of everything. But uh, I just wanted to show you one other way that we can do this, and that's uh, by offsetting this. Um, if we offset this by 0.5, uh, that's going to move it uh, halfway in one direction, and that's going to give us the exact flag that we need. So I'll render this, and you can see that I have um, a perfect American flag uh, right to the United States government specifications.